Good morning, fellow mathematicians. Welcome back to another video. First things first, I caught a cold, so I'm not at my best today, but I'm going to try my best to make this the highest quality possible. What we are going to do today is we are going to integrate this bad boy right here. It's called SoFlow Pro Stream. No, wait, SoFlow Pro was the guy who got bashed by H3H3. It's called SoFomo Stream. <laughs> and it was a former Putnam question. What we want to show today is that this is equal to some kind of infinite sum. So that's what we want to show today. We are not going to get an exact result because the result in the end is going to converge really fast. You can just plug in some numbers into your calculator and you will see the result. Okay, so what can we do at first? This thing right here, this integrand looks kind of ugly right now, so we want to transform it using e to the ln of something. So that's a nice property. We are going to turn it into the integral from 0 to 1 of e to the ln x to the minus x dx. So we can do this, that's an equivalent approach. And the nice thing is, we can use natural log property right here to bring this minus x to the front. So this is also equal to the integral from 0 to 1 of e to the minus x ln of x dx. And now we can start transforming this thing right here into an infinite sum using one definition of the exponential function. So this is now equal to the integral from 0 to 1 of, okay, so that's the infinite sum from let's say k equals to 0 to infinity of minus x times natural log of x to the kth power over k factorial dx. So that's the first thing we want to do. And, well, what can we do next? Uh, maybe at first we could um, distribute this cave power into everything and see what we get. And maybe we can bring some constants to the outside. Okay, so this is now the integral from 0 to 1 of this infinity boy from k equals to 0 to infinity of minus 1 to the cave power times x to the cave power times natural log of x to the cave power over k factorial dx. And now we can start shifting around a bit. So without any restrictions we are going to assume that we can interchange the infinite sum and this integral sign and also minus 1 to the kth power and 1 over k factorial is a constant in terms of x. So we can bring it to the outside, we can bring it in front of the integral. So what do we end up with now? This is now this infinity boy, k equals to 0 to infinity of minus 1 to the kth power over k factorial times the integral from 0 to 1 of x to the kth power times natural log of x to the kth power dx. Hmm. So integrating this is not too nice because we've got to the kth power right here. So what we could do, we could introduce a u substitution for example. And we are going to do this as follows. So we are going to let some u equal to um, the natural log of x. But the thing is, if we differentiate that, we get an e to the u on one side, and it's not good. Things wouldn't really converge, so that wouldn't be too nice, because if we plug in 0 into here, for example, u would equal to minus infinity. So we can fix this little problem by just plugging in a negative sign into here. So that also means that minus du is now equal to 1 over x dx but we can bring 1 over x to the other side, so multiplying by x on both sides, and what is x? Well, x is just e to the minus u. So this is also equivalent to saying we get minus e to the minus u, du is equal to dx. So that's the first thing we want to do. And now we can plug everything in. This is now the infinite sum from k equals to 0 to infinity of minus 1 to the kth power over k factorial times the integral. So what's our new upper and lower bound? Hmm. So if we plug 0 into here, that would go to minus infinity, this natural log, but we get a negative sign here. So our lower bound is just infinity, and if we plug in 1 into here, well, use just 0 in that case. So this is 0. Now remember, what is x? x is just e to the minus u. So at first we get e to the minus u times k. Okay, so we have to still bring this k to the exponent, and we get um, minus u to the kth power, 
And what is dx? dx is just minus e to the u du. So those were the first steps. And quite importantly, don't forget to distribute this k also into this minus 1. So that's going to be important in a second. Now let's move on. What can we do now? Well, like I said before, we can distribute this k of power into this minus 1 and this u. And let's see what we get at first. So this is now, once again, the infinity boy. k equals to 0 to infinity of minus 1 to the k of power. That's a lot of writing, my boys k factorial. And the next thing we could do, we could take this minus 1 right here and distribute it into this integral. So we can change the order of integration. So that's now the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the minus uk. And then minus 1 to the k of power times u to the k of power e to the u du. And here's one great thing. If we bring this minus 1 to the k of power to the front, because it's just um, a constant, we can multiply it by this minus 1 to the k of power and we get minus 1 to the 2k power. And the great thing is the power 2k will always give us an even power. And minus 1 to an even power is just a regular one. So we could also say that those two terms are always going to be 1 when multiplied together. So that was great, we got rid of that. And also, those got the same base, so we can bring them together. Um, and that's also e to the minus u, I'm sorry for that. Um, same thing down here, I forgot that. Okay, and now we get the infinity boy from k equals to zero to infinity of one over k factorial times the integral from zero to infinity of e to the minus u, k plus one. I'm going to factor out the minus u and the exponent times u to the k of power du. And if you got some experience, you might notice that this nearly looks like the gamma function. So the gamma function will give us some kind of factorial. So maybe in the best case, we could get rid of this k factorial right here. So let's remember what the gamma function looks like. So let's say gamma offset will be equal to set minus one factorial. And what is that? In integral form, it looks like this. That's the integral from zero to infinity of e um, to the minus t and t to the, oh, I still have to think about it, uh, t to the z minus one times dt. So that's what the gamma function looks like. And maybe we could bring this right here into this form. And we can do that by introducing a new substitution. So for example, let v equal to this right here, u times k plus one. And that also means that dv is just k plus one du. And we, and we can divide both sides by k plus one so that du is just dv over k plus one. And now we can plug everything in. So once again, infinite sum k equals to zero to infinity of one over k factorial. And the next thing, if we plug zero into here, that just gives us zero. And if we plug infinity into here, that would give us v equals to infinity. Okay, now this is e to the minus v. And also, well, what is u? u is just v over k plus one. So this is v over k plus one, but the whole thing to the k of power. And also we get um, dv over k plus one. So we came pretty far on this one. And what we can do, we can bring, uh, we can uh, distribute this k of power into here. So that gives us v to the k of power over k plus one to the k of power. And also we can distribute this k plus one into this here. And all in all, this will give us one over k plus one to the k plus one power. And we can bring it to the front. <laughs> That's just a constant in terms of x. So we get now the infinite sum of 1 over k factorial over 1 over k plus 1 to the k plus 1 and times the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the minus v, v to the k, dv. And now we can use our gamma function right here because this term right here, c minus 1, z minus 1 factorial, is just this exponent right here. So we end up with k factorial in this case. So this monster expression is just k factorial. And you might notice 1 over k factorial, and k factorial will just be 1. So in the end, we have infinite sum 
from k equals to 0 to infinity of 1 over k plus 1 to the k plus 1. And if you want, you can change the index, for example. So let j equal to k plus 1. That will mean that our index runs from j equals to 1 to infinity. So it's just j equals to 1 to infinity of 1 over j to the j power, for example. And that's what we wanted to show. And this infinite sum, like I said before, will converge pretty fast. It will be like 1.29 something. It will go on forever. Yeah, so that was SoFlow Pro Stream. <laughs> if you like this video, please like and subscribe and recommend me if you like. And well, if you want to support me a bit more, link to my Patreon will be in the description. And up until the next video, have a flammable day. See ya.